Good evening. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> boom, boom. Uh, I'm going to tell you, um, uh, uh, another sheriff's officer came to me. Um, he was retiring, or he was quitting retiring, you know, same thing. And um, he said to me, he goes, he said, uh, he's, he's also a pastor. He's a pastor down in Mending Place. Um, you might have seen this other guy kind of, he has a little little patch of hair up here, skinned all around. He comes up here and usually talks to Darren and, and me. That's actually Levi. He's, he's the sound guy for Mending Place over there. And, and uh, he just coming around to kind of check out the new system because that he likes that stuff. So, <laughs> so he's just kind of been hanging around with us around here. And, and um, uh, so it's, that's been really kind of really cool. But uh, I don't know where I was going with that. I was out of place. Hold on. I'm getting back. Um, huh? Retiring. Yes. Yeah, so that's where he goes. Thank you, Larry. Keeping me on track. Whew. Been a long day. So um, he was, we were talking about preaching. And he said, well, what is it? And he, he actually asked me, he says, what is it like? And I go, oh, man, I don't know. And, he, and he's like, so what do you feel like afterwards after you get done preaching? And I said, well, I feel like I've been like holding on to something electrifying. And finally, when I let go, it's like, oh, oh, thank you, Father. Thank God. Like, Whoo. And you can imagine doing that twice. And then I think of Pastor Bob, who's been doing that for you. Me and Larry talked many years like that. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, and, and it's one of those things that I know that God um, has to be involved with. I was watching something else on YouTube today about um, pastors that are out there. And, and I... I don't like to judge other pastors because I honestly don't know where they're at. I don't know what their faith looks like for one. And I, I really don't like judging um, individual sermons out of context. You know, there may be something going on, maybe something in the church that they're addressing, all those things. And even even as we as we are about ready to start, you know, whereas we're recording and trying to get that up and kind of moving throughout throughout the social media and network and everything else. To make sure people, if you're not able to, you're able to hear at home for some reason. If you're not feeling well, you're able to, we're able to upload it like that and for you to be able to hear it, hear a message. And so it doesn't matter where you're at in the world, you could hear a message from here. And um, it, it's actually on a little drive up there. We have a, we plug it in and we're able to put it on the computer and it's uploaded everywhere. And I, I say all that because, you know, we... We're just, uh, hmm. we are, you just don't know, you know, when, when those messages go out, how people are going to receive those messages. And there's so many people out there that are very critical of what's going on. And you, again, you don't, you don't know what's going on here. And there's a lot of things that happen. But I do say this, though. Uh, the word of the God, word of our God, never changes, and that's and because He doesn't change, He's everlasting and everlasting, and so as long as we are up here and doing our best, our best to to continue to praise and speak His word. I mean, that there's nothing else we can do. I mean, that's it. That's it. Um, we have to do our best not to say something that's out of context or out of craziness and everything else. And you guys say. Um, as I was finishing up today, as the sermon was finishing up and everything, and I was extremely over time, uh, which I, I kind of go, well, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I gave an offering up to anybody that's want to come forward, we'll pray for you. And this young man comes up. And I was telling Larry and Virginia at the very end, as the lights were being shut down, and as we were kind of talking at the very end of just the day, or, you know, the first sermon today. Um, his eyes, as he was coming towards me, um, I didn't think anybody was going to come up, to be honest with you. I was giving that offering. You know, I mean, who knows? You know, I don't know if somebody's going to come up, but this young man comes up, and his eyes, um, looking at me, it was like there was a hunger that was there that I, I've never really seen before. But I wonder if my eyes ever made that same look before when I ever had a message that hit me and I walked towards a pastor. And 
I couldn't explain it. And I can't sit here. I can't today come here and tell you exactly how that interaction was because I was stepping down and he was coming forward. And those eyes in his, just how he was, it was hopelessness, but hopeful. And I just wonder, and I, and I sit there and I wonder afterwards, and as I was thinking about it, and it just kind of hit my heart because I was, I was looking at that and I was thinking that's how it must have been when people saw Jesus walking, you know, walking in the, in, you know, anywhere. If it was in Jerusalem or if it was in the fields or by the shore, I mean, just, just that look, that intent look. And I think about that as with Peter now, thinking about it. And, and as he was on the edge of the boat and he saw Jesus and he jumped out of the boat, didn't wait for it, but jumped out of the boat and, and walked towards, you know, swam, <laughs> sank maybe here and there, and, 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 and walked towards Jesus. It was that intent look. And guys, I'm not saying I'm Jesus at all. At all. <laughs> I'm nowhere near. But I wonder if that was the look. And I think I recognize the look because I know that I've had that look before. Does that make sense? I, I, and again, guys, I hope you understand. I'm not saying I'm Jesus. I'm not saying any of those things. I'm not, I'm not even coming close to that. I just look at that look and I think of that. He had nothing else to lose. I prayed for him. And um, just meet him. Um, I'm very sensitive how I say this today. Uh, the all of a sudden at about 4.30 today, I'm like, I need to pray for him. And then not only that, I need to send him a message. So I sent him this message because I, I had it on my phone and I had his name. And I said, you know, give me your phone number so we can get a touch with you later on. And, and he, he did. And, and something just hit me hit me hard. I'm in the middle of writing a sermon out, you know, in the middle of really studying and writing, doing all those things. And, and as I was writing that out, you know, I, I don't like distractions. But the Lord, as I'm doing these things, says, hey, what about this? What about that? And I know it's the Lord because it's all good things. It's nothing distraction is, hey, you know, what's on Netflix today. It's nothing like that. It's a distraction of, hey, did you get right with this person? Did you send this person a prayer? Did you, I mean, and so it's just this constant, like, I was tapped into this, this supernatural highway of information going back and forth. And, and I just feel like it, it was like, hey, are you connected? You know, I know you're connected, so, so you need to start praying for this person, this person, and start thinking about this person, and send them per this message for this person, this person. And it's just like, I'm trying to do your work. And he's like, that's what exactly what I want you to do. <laughs> Oh wow. I sent a message to him. And I'm not gonna go into the details. I don't feel like that's right. But I do say this. It was needed. It was needed more than we will ever, ever know. I'm just glad I got to be a part. That's it. That's it. I just, guys, that's what it's all about. It's just us being a part. We're not. We're not doing anything. I mean, I know we're doing something, but we're not, we're not actually doing it. God's putting it upon our heart to do, and it's needed. That's it. It's just needed, and so we do it. Guys, so today, before we, I mean, this isn't even the message. This is just me talking. Well, not really, but this is me, <laughs> and I say that is because I want you to understand something. The work is, is needed to be done. Guys, open your, your heart, open your heart in prayer, and I'm telling you, you're going to get bombarded. But don't stop. Start praying. Guys, you prayed. You prayed for people to come to this church, and you got a whole church of people. I love that. I love that story. Do you know why I love that story? It's because... God's bigger than all of you. <laughs> I love that story because we're part of the happy ending of that story because we got to be a part of this move. And I know I said this morning, and I know, I, I, man, 
Me and Pastor Bob speak about it all the time. We say, if people only knew what we knew, there would, there would be no doubt. We could, we could explain it for, for here until the end of, you know, until <laughs> Jesus is like, all right, come home. Um, but we can't explain it. But, but, but that's the thing is, that's what's so wonderful about it is because to explain it is to explain God. Does that make sense? Like to be able to explain what happened, to be able to, the dynamics and every little thing happening at one moment or another and all these different things happening is to be able to explain what, who and what God is. There's not enough time in the world to be able to explain him. <laughs> but I do say thank you for bearing with me this morning for going completely way over fun time. But I promise you, <laughs> I promise you we're not going to be late tonight. Uh, now, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> I like that, praise the Lord. No, I know what you, uh, but, but here it is, is, is I'm promising you we're not going to go over. I don't know what the Holy Spirit's going to happen tonight, but, but I'm promising you we're not going to go over. <laughs> so as I was studying tonight, and we're going to be in John chapter 12, verse 24 through 26. So if you actually want to get there early, you're more welcome to. We are going to get to these scriptures. We got, we got several that we're going to be talking about tonight. Four main ones, all related to each other. Um, John chapter 12, verse 24 through 26. Um, <clears throat> as I was studying for the, for the message for tonight, and as I was kind of getting it all together, and, and as I was reading, I was like, you know, I, I better make sure I know what I'm talking about. I always want to make sure I know what I'm talking about, right? And... Uh, reality sometimes, you know, for instance, I'll tell you right now, de uh, any type of definition of a word, you want to make sure you're right on. Uh, I've said the word legacy about a thousand times, and I looked it up, and it was nowhere near the word I think it means. Nowhere near. I thought legacy was like this powerful thing, and, 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 and money, and, and power, and, and uh, all these things. Uh, uh, and you're creating this, like, when I think of legacy, you know what I, th I think of Billy Graham. Billy Graham is, has a, a legacy, right? Man, it's a legacy. But you look at it, it's just monetary value being passed over from, from after an inheritance. It doesn't mean what we think it means. Now, I say that is because it's the same thing as I, I'm about ready to talk about uh, a, a, a plant, the seed dying to be able to produce a plant, right, to be able to do something. And so for the longest time, I mean, honestly, I thought that same thing. I thought, I thought you know what, the, you know, a seed has to die before, so, it can, so it can grow. And so I looked it up. I Googled it. I said, you know, does a, does a seed die to produce a plant? And it says no. And I go, wait a minute. Now, hold on, hold on. And then I start going back to my scriptures. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, okay. I'm pretty sure I was right on this. I know Jesus, what he said. And he says, truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. And I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, Jesus said the seed has to die. And so I've known that for a long time. And, and even then, so I, I've actually, you know, I've been to classes and I said, you know, I've heard, I think I've heard teachers even say that, uh, you know, the seed has to die to be able to produce the plant. And, and so when I was going through the study, one of the, the, this article said that a seed does not die. It's actually still living. The seed has always been living for, for the most part, and it's just waiting to be germinated. I think I might have made a new word up today, but it's okay. If it's, I think it's close. I think it's, I think it's right there. And it has to germinate to be able to produce a plant. But it's always there. It's just lying and dormant. Okay. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm like, all right, all right, all right, God, you, you, you got to help me here, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, why, why would, I mean, so, so if we're looking at this is, is and I'll, I'll go to actually what I'm saying is I, I started reading and found this article, and of course, like I said, I, and just, it says it, it lives in a dormant state waiting to be at the right environment, planted in, the, in good ground, not too deep, not too shallow, water and sun, this article then tried uh, to tell me that Jesus was not wrongish, but not rightish either. You like how I said that? 
I think, I think the writer was a little scared to even say that Jesus was wrong or a little scared to say Jesus was right because, the, you know, it, you have that academic side and you have the spiritual side. So you're having these two things uh, debate each other. Um, And I think what happened after that, after them, after writing this article, I think maybe uh, he, they, they tried to explain what Jesus really probably meant to say. <laughs> and, and so I'm sitting there and I'm reading this and I'm like, wow, you know, this is, this is, this is difficult. But then as I was reading the article, you know, things started popping out. And, and then honestly, guys, here it is, is when, it, when if you're not in the word, I mean, I mean, you're not understanding the word, understanding what biblical concepts, you know, the, 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 the scripture and all these things. If you're not in the word constantly, um, things that something else says could make sense. Right? Now, I say that is because we've seen some crazy stuff that shouldn't make sense make sense to people. I mean, I talked about the, the abortion. How in the world can that make sense? Or, or it doesn't. It doesn't make sense at all. But, but, but to some people out there, it makes sense. Okay, so uh, that's extreme. But what about, what about I mean, what about there's, there's other things that, I mean, there's other things out there that could, I mean, maybe make sense. Uh, I, I mean, I've, I've even heard people go, well, I mean, I I'm a Christian, but I believe in evolution. I'm like, oh, well, pump the brakes. Okay, what did you say? Well, I mean, I mean, I, I was like, so you're saying we came from monkeys, and then it's a whole new, new subject. <laughs> and so, so I read this article, and I'm like, okay, so is, so is Jesus wrong? No. But I... I want to say this. After reading this article, I found a hole. Uh, I found a hole in the argument as they were saying this, as this, as this, the author was writing this. See, again, going back to the whole premise: if we're not in the Word, this world will create doubt. Now, I, I watched this movie one time, and I and I did like how they said this. Doubt is a good thing. Now, bear with me when I say this. Doubt is a good thing because it lets you know how your faith is being tested. Oh, there's a change on that. But bear with me when I say this is this. In the moment of any doubt, your faith is being tested. I don't think I'm the only one that has ever had doubt. I don't care how spiritual you are. <laughs> I have had doubt. I have. I have had doubt. God, is this what you're really intending me to do right now? now? That's doubt. I mean, it sounds like a question, but it's it's a little doubt. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if he didn't want you doing something, he'd let you know. <laughs> But this, when you're not in the word, it can create doubt. And it can get so strong if you do not have any type of remedy to it. Meaning, if you don't have the remedy to the doubt, it's going to overtake you. And that's what causes fear. That's what causes anxiety. That's what causes a lot of these things. Because you start worrying about things when you realize there's nothing to worry about. We're not promised, as I said before today, we're not, we're not promised 75 years. We're not pr promised 75 minutes. We're not promised 75 seconds. I could drop dead right now. I'm not promised anything. I'm promised here, but I'm not promised this. Make sense? I'm not promised this. What was interesting about this article, it said the writer used the word awaken about the seed until, until the point where the seed is awakened. <laughs> As I'm sitting there like, how does this author not hear what they're saying? 
How does this, I mean, it, 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 they took this, this thing and they're trying to say, well, you know, Jesus is kind of right, kind of wrong, I don't know. But then they started using words like awaken. They're talking about the man that awoke a dead man. Does that mean sense? Hey, Lazarus, come forward. Is that not awaken? Was Lazarus dead? Yeah. I believe he was. Absolutely. He wasn't just sneezing. He was dead. The creator of heaven and earth can do whatever they want, he wants to do. <laughs> but the writer that used the word awaken, and, and, and it just like baffled me. I'm like, wait a minute, what? Are you, so are you even, do you even know the word then at that time? And that's what I'm sitting there thinking. And it's, uh, and it just baffles me. But then I, then I started thinking about, it. okay, well, maybe this person doesn't really know the word. Because if they knew the word, then they know what they're trying, what Jesus was trying to say. Because then Paul follows it up in Romans and then back to Jesus and then back to Romans. So that's what we're doing today. So let, let's go to uh, John chapter 12, verse 24 through 26. I'm going to read all of these scriptures all together to get the main big point here. And it's only one big point. It's just Jesus. Truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. The one who loves his life will lose it. And the one who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone, uh, if anyone uh, serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, there my servant also will be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 13. Romans 8, chapter 12 through 13. It says, so then, brothers and sisters, we are not, uh, sorry, let me go, let me actually go to my word. Ah. So then, brothers and sisters, we are, yeah, we are not uh, uh, obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Because if you live according to the flesh, you will, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. I'm going back to John 15, 4 through 5. It says, remain in me and I in you, just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branch. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. And then going back to Romans, Romans 7, 46, 4 through 6 says, therefore, my brothers and sisters, you also were put to death in relation to the law through the body of Christ so that you may belong to another. You belong to him and who, uh, and who was raised from the dead in order that we may bear fruit for God. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions arose through the law were, uh, were working in us to bear fruit for death. But now we have been released from the law since we have died to what held us so that we may serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the old letter of the law. I was listening to uh, uh, Prager U University. It's a Prager U, what they call it. It's on YouTube. And it's actually kind of really neat. And I like them if you ever get a chance to, if you watch any YouTube videos, Prager U does a lot of different um, a lot of different things, and it kind of dispels a lot of what <sighs> false information, let's put it that way. And they were talking about the law. And it was interesting how what Paul was saying. So Paul knew the law. Actually, he knew the law better than any of the disciples knew the law. Um, I think the only person that probably would have knew more of the law would have been Jesus. <laughs> but Paul knew the law. And I, and I want to understand this. The law is still relevant today. 
okay? The law is still good today. The law is still good, and it's still, it, and I say that is because this. What Jesus was saying is he didn't nullify the law. He didn't, he didn't put it away. He didn't, I mean, he, he, he didn't, I mean, he nullified the law, but, but he didn't, um, how's the word I'm looking for? He didn't just come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. So he didn't just throw it away. It, it, it's not something of all time. What it was is he's saying, look, this is, this is the fulfillment of the law, but you still need to move forward in trying to keep these commandments because that's what brings you closer to righteousness. And that's the thing is, is we today are still striving for those laws. Now, I bear my heart on when I say that is because I'm not saying that that's what we're, but what I'm trying to say is this, we, we as a body of believers need to understand what the law is for us. Those first four are for God, right? Those first four are for God, and the last six are for us, to us, us, to us. We are called to bear this fruit. People need to know when we have this fruit on us. And I say that is because when you walk through any type of orchard, or if you, were, if you were walked through an orchard, if you were, drove by some apple trees or anything like that, do you know when they're producing fruit? You can see it, right? You can see that fruit being produced. Any tree that is producing fruit, is gonna, you're going to see those fruit. Even if it's bad fruit, you still see it. Those hedge apples, big old green hedge apple looking nasty things that have you know, slime all over it and all that other stuff, but you still see that fruit of that tree, right? I know I don't want to go eat that, so I mean, I know that that's not a good tree to eat, of course. But that's what we're called to be. When we look at these commandments, or we look at Jesus' words and, and, and what he's fulfilled, and you look at the, 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 the disciples afterwards, you look at Paul's words, his letters, you see that these things are producing, the works that are supposed to be producing in your life. And that's important. You don't want to produce bad fruit. So how do we produce good fruit? The only way we can produce good fruit is we have to die from the old. See, we don't walk around and we have all these trees out here, right in front, of, right, right here, right here on, on the side of the, of the church. And facing the north, we have all these trees. And we don't walk by those trees and say, oh, look at those beautiful seeds. Right? You don't walk by any type of plant and you go, oh, look at those beautiful seeds. See, what Jesus was saying is, look, the, these, this old outer shell, this old outer shell is going to have to die. What was once there that is still left dormant, something inside is left dormant, is going to have to die. This outer shell is going to have to die so what's inside can be born. So something inside can take root. So something inside can break through and continue to feed off of the sun. And you can look at S-U-N or S-O-N. That's what's going to have to happen. See, plants get their food from the sun. Why do we not get our food from the sun? It's an interesting how Jesus said, he talked about two elements that we have to partake in. Food and water. And what did he say? Come on, somebody out there and tell me what he said about food. I'm the living bread. And the everlasting water that will always be fulfilling, fulfilling. Isn't that interesting and wonderful how he did that? That he not only talks about the seed that is there that is going to have to sprout out of the ground, but he, then he talks about that not only is it the sun that has to that that that, that plant feeds off of, but it also feeds off of the elements around it, meaning water. 
to the ground using some sort of nutrients for it, for, for cultivating, for, for growing. This, this author of the story didn't realize that what they were trying to say was maybe not so accurate, but if they were to look at what Jesus was trying to say, the words that he said over and over again throughout Scripture, seeing that, and that, that Jesus was there in the beginning, but when God said, let there be light, they would understand that he knows what he's talking about. But that seed does have to die. The outer shell does have to die. Your old ways have to die. You can't keep them. Just like you can't keep your riches when you go to heaven. I mean, I'm saying you can't. Uh, I love my coffee table. I'm taking it with me. You know, I'm going to be buried with it. You may be buried with it, but it ain't going with you in heaven. And thank God, because there's a lot of junk I have in my house that I don't want going with me to heaven. <laughs> but that's the thing. That's the thing, that shell. I don't want to be a seed anymore. I don't want to be a seed. I don't want to be a seed that's just there. I don't want to be just left dormant anymore. I want to sprout. I want to grow. I want to bloom. Why not? Guys, I'm telling you right now, we, we should long for not just days of like where we, in the wintertime, we lose all our leaves and stuff. I'm talking about let's be palm trees where we're always green all year long. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I do like that. Let's just, I, I want to be somewhere warm. I know. I want to be a palm tree. I'm always producing fruit and always green all the time. Always living. Always blossoming. Guys, let's go to Romans, last scripture for the night. Hey, I'm entering on time. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. I want to end on this note. I feel good to end on this note tonight. Romans chapter 6, verses 22 through 23, it says, But now, since you have been set free from sin and have become enslaved to God, you have your fruit, which, res which results in sanctification. And the outcome is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Guys, that right there. That brings a smile to my face because it's the understanding of what is that little bit right there, that last end of it right there. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That's it, guys. The dead is dead. Let it be dead. Let it sit there. Let your old shell be gone. Let it be sitting there in the ground. Let it die and float away. Get away. Get into the soil. Move away. Get off of me. I want the new. And that's what we should be craving for every single time. Is every time we wake up, that old shell is dead. And we have a new life in us. We get to blossom. We get to be more than we ever did before, right? We get to do more and shake more and live more in God. We get to do everything because we have Him. Amen. There's no more dead in this world when we're here. Guys, I, I, I'm telling you, there's no way to be afraid of, of death anymore because we have eternal life through Christ Jesus. Amen. We have been given this gift and the moment that we look at it and go, well, you know, it's all right. Man, we lost it. What are we doing? The moment we sit there and go become idle, the moment that we sit there and we don't want to produce any more fruit anymore, the moment we sit there and go, well, had a good run, I'll just wait it out. You might as well be ready for the ax. I don't want that. I don't want to be... I don't want to be somebody's firewood. 
I want to continue to blossom, continue to produce fruit day in, day out. You know, Jesus walked and he saw this fig tree and he went to it. And it had supposed to have fruit on it and it didn't have fruit, but it looked like it was supposed to have fruit, but it didn't have fruit. It didn't produce any fruit and he cursed that fig tree. Guys, I'm telling you right now, I don't want to be cursed. When people come to me and when people come to you, you better be ready to produce some fruit. You better, when they come to you, they're looking to see if you're fruitful. They're looking to see if you have that fruit ready to go. But if you sit there and go, well, you know what? Uh, I don't really have your answers, but, you know, Pastor Clayton, you could talk to him after service. No, they came to you. They came to you. They saw something in you. They thought you were producing fruit. Right? We already know God's going to give you a word. We know it. Just open your mouth and it'll be, those words will be given to you. You give it over to God, you're going to get those words. You're going to get that fruit. But the moment you shut somebody down, heaven help us. Heaven help. Guys, I've been there, and I've shut some people down before. And those people still haunt my dreams. I can't go back to time. I can't go back in time. All you got to know is from this moment on, I can't allow that to happen anymore. God, what are you doing? And how can I help? And guys, I'm going to be telling you right now, it's going to be the most inopportune times. It's going to be those times that you don't want to help. It's going to be those times that you're ready to go to bed. It's going to be those times that you're having to go to work or there's going to be those times you're ready to eat something and somebody's going to call you and say, I need help. Okay, I'll be there. And I tell you, every time you do that, you'll come home excited. You'll come home charged. Because God used you today. The creator of heaven and earth. The creator of heaven and earth that could have used anybody else today. The person that, he could have used anybody else in this congregation, but he decided to use you, Bonnie. He said, you know what? I'm going to use Bonnie today. Boom. And now you're being used. How awesome is that? The creator of heaven and earth. And I know we say that, and it sometimes just rolls off so easily on the tongue. It just rolls off so easily, and we can just say, you know, the, the creator of heaven and earth, well, you know. And it sounds so simple, but honestly, guys, everything that we can't see to the very little bitty, to the great grand, he created it all. And today, he is using you to do something for his name. Be ready. Have that fruit. Ready to give. Die of your old. Let it go. We can move forward. I'm ready to move forward. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to have people coming off the street that are going to be coming into this, this building, this beautiful church, and they're going to not know God. And the only way they're going to see God is through you. You are the first step. And sometimes you might be the last. Sometimes you might be the last person they talk to for the rest of their life. Don't ever let anything divide over you. It's Jesus and Jesus only. It's not Jesus plus. It's Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Let's pray.